Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevan Zwelder. Today we're going to speak about a very important subject for you spiritually. And the subject is neglecting your Bible. Neglecting your Bible. You know, I get the opportunity in the ministry to do a lot of personal work. And it's a great delight. I actually love to do it. I like to deal with Christians and help them when they're sorting out problems that they're having, understanding something in the Bible, or sorting out a problem that they're having in their life. I, I like it. I'm, I'm delighted to be able to help them and to minister to them. There's a, there's a joy in that. Uh, I like to deal with the lost about uh, their souls and preach to them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and watch the Lord uh, bring up verses that help them to understand you know, their need of salvation and b verses that will bring the reproof of the Spirit of God and verses that by which they are born again and, and to see them get saved. It's just fabulous, absolutely wonderful. And in the course of doing personal work with people, I've, I've discovered something that is a common problem in a lot of people's lives, saved and lost, and that is they neglect the Bible. They neglect the Bible. In other words, you'll find people... Uh, struggling with a particular sin in their life, they're struggling with uh, direction in their life, they're struggling with uh, their marriage or some occupation or some a major decision, and oftentimes the problem is they just haven't been in the Bible. Of course, lost people, that there's the same problem, they, there's a biblical illiteracy. And you know, years ago, you saw lots of people saved through evangelistic crusades and so forth, but you know, there were a lot of people who could quote Bible that weren't saved. Uh, we're dealing in a society of biblical illiteracy right now, and consequently, it is creating or causing a lot of trouble for people to get saved and for people who are saved to go on and live and grow in the Lord. So today, what we want to talk about is some things that happen in the life of a person who neglects the Bible. First of all, we'll look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. The Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Well, what happens when you neglect the Bible is that you, 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 uh, you affect your faith. There's a negative effect on your faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, right? All right, then, if it affects your faith, it's going to affect your walk. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. All right, when you, when you neglect your Bible and faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and we walk by faith, you know what's going to be affected first of all? It's going to be your your spiritual walk. Your spiritual walk. You see, you become self-reliant when you don't read your Bible because then you have to think through the situations you deal with in life and figure, how am I going to handle this situation? You'll pray, but you won't have spiritual light. You won't have a spirit for your walk. In other words, your, your faith is going to be diminished. And so it's going to affect your spiritual walk because you need faith in order to walk, you see. And the problem is, if we walk by faith and not by sight, and you're not reading the Bible because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, then you are thinking that you're walking by faith when, in fact, you're walking by sight. Do you understand that? You, are, you see how the employees 
are reacting. You see how the supervisor is reacting. You see how it is the problems are affecting your marriage. You you see how the finances are being drained from your portfolio. You see how the children are becoming wayward. You see the problems at church that cause you to question whether you should still be going to that church. You see how things are shaping up politically and economically in the country. You see how your car is not running well. <laughs> you see how a friendship is being strained. And so you react to what you see. You react to what you see in a marital situation, in a occupational situation, in a friendship situation, in a economic situation, in a political situation, and on and on the list goes. There are many, many Christians who live by sight because though they are to walk by faith, they cannot because they're not in the Bible. And so their spiritual walk is affected. Now they'll say, I am trying to do this the way that I believe God wants me to do, but because of a lack of being in the Bible, you don't know where you're going. Neglecting the Bible will affect your spiritual walk. I'll show you something else that will affect. Psalm 119. Psalm 119 and verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Where does that light come from? The word of God. And so when you cut off the word of God, that is, you're not reading it, then you have no spiritual light. And you need spiritual light because you need direction in your life. And, and the faith by which we walk is not blind faith, you see. It is illuminated by the word of God. Now, it's faith because you don't know the end result. All you know is how much light is coming from the Word of God that is lighting your feet. But if you can get your feet down in the right spot, in other words, if you're moving in the right direction, you don't need to know where it comes out as long as you're on the right road. Bob Jones Sr. said, the right road leads out at the right place. So all I need to know is that I'm on the right road and that my steps are being ordered by the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 133, Order my steps in thy word. You see that? Psalm 119, verse 133, Order my steps in thy word. All I need to do is I just have to have enough light from the Scripture to know that whatever else I'm facing out in front of me, I am facing in accordance with the direction I'm getting from the word of God. Listen, we all face problems in our lives. And when we do, we need Scripture. And what I've noticed in my own Bible reading and study and you know, preaching and all that other stuff is that there's an arsenal of verses that the Lord can use to bring something to mind that reveals the direction He wants me to take on any, on, on any situation that comes up. And if you don't have the Word of God then he can't order your steps in the Word of God because you, you have nothing, there's no resources, there's no tools, there's nothing for him to be able to give you a light or to give you order. So neglecting the Bible affects your spiritual walk and it affects your spiritual light. You know, at night, you may have to wake up and, what, go to the bathroom. You know, it's very helpful to have just a little bit of light so that you can walk there and back without stubbing your toe. You don't want an intense light. You don't want it to wake you up. You just need a little bit of light to make sure you're not getting ready to step on something or walk into something that could hurt you. A night light. A little bit of light from the Scripture every day is very, very valuable. The Bible characterizes the age in which we live now as nighttime. The Bible talks about the Lord Jesus Christ returning in one of the watches of the night. So in the nighttime, you need a little bit of light to be able to give you direction every single day. 
And neglecting the Bible affects your spiritual walk. It affects your spiritual light. Okay? The ability to make decisions is drastically hindered when you don't have light from the Word of God. I'll tell you something else it'll do. It affects your spiritual cleansing. You know, we live in a filthy world. I don't know about you, <laughs> but I think I know. You are affected every day by things you see and things you hear in just your everyday life. You go to the store, you may hear overhear a conversation, and it is defiling. You may be on your Internet trying to, I don't know, look up something that you need to find, and in the process of doing it, you might be exposed to something that you see that is spiritually defiling. Um, you may have a thought that runs through your mind. That's a common problem for us. You may have a, co a problem that runs through your mind or a thought that runs through your mind, and it has a defiling effect on your spirit because it's not a good thought. It's a wicked imagination. You know, you could, um, there are a lot of ways through what you hear and what you see where you can be spiritually defiled. And you know what the Word of God does for you? It cleanses you. The Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 3, Now ye are clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. Now ye are clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. You see, there's a command in the Scripture that we cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Do you know where that is? That's in 2 Corinthians Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now the greatest, one of the greatest cleansing agents given to you by the Lord is the Scripture. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ from the context of verse 25, that he, that is Jesus Christ, might sanctify and cleanse it, that's the church, with the washing of water by the word. Neglecting the Bible affects your spiritual cleansing, and you need spiritual cleansing. Listen, more now than ever before, and you can pray all you want to pray. You can read all the self-help books you want to read in order to try to deal with uh, your thought life or some of the things that you do as a result of your thought life. Uh, you can go to church and listen to the preaching, and you can you know, get high on the music if that's the kind of church you go to and so forth. Those things are going to be insufficient to provide for your spiritual cleansing when God has given you something so powerful as the words of God. You know that? You really, really, really need to read the words of God because they affect your spiritual cleansing. Listen, when a man ministered in the Bible, he wore sandals and his feet had to be cleaned. Okay? You get out here in the world and you live, you are going to get defiled every day and you need to be cleansed every day. You take a shower, don't you? Well, then get in the book, all right? Let me tell you something else that neglecting the Bible will do. It's going to affect something drastic in your life. It's going to affect your spiritual food, your spiritual food. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 4 and look at verse 4. Your spiritual nourishment is what's affected here, all right? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus Christ answered that verse of Scripture to the devil when the devil tempted him to change those stones into bread after he'd been fasting all that time. And, and the Lord answered him, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now you eat. If you, if you hadn't been eating, you wouldn't be alive to listen to this radio broadcast. You eat. And that food that you eat, some of it may be really good for you. Some of it may not be so good for you. But in some way, your body is trying to derive nourishment from everything you put in your body. All right? That physical nourishment gives you the strength to be able to function. 
I was talking to a fellow one time, and he said, you know, I've gotten to know how my body functions. We don't all function the same way. But he said, if I've got a lot of studying to do and a lot of reading to do, he said, then I will eat more greens and I will eat more vegetables. And those t- seem to stimulate my mind, and they don't make me lethargic. He said, if I were to eat a big steak before trying to study, I would be asleep. I would be lethargic. I, I would be sluggish mentally. I would not be um, I would not be sharp. And Daniel, of course, suggested uh, and requested that the diet that he and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were on should be changed. And the reason is very simple. They were sluggish in the king's meat, so they went to pulse. He said, I found that to be true in my life, and he found some vegetables and so forth that he eats that nourish him, but don't put him to sleep, don't make him sluggish. He said, now, if I've got to go out and do some heavy labor, and I've got to do some some real, like, you know, cutting firewood and, and a lot of manual work, building things and whatnot, he said, then the vegetables don't do me much good. They, they leave me undernourished. I'm not, I'm not strong for the work that I'm about to do. He said, so I'll eat a good portion of meat then uh, with, with the food that I'm eating, with the vegetables and so forth, because he said, then I have the strength I need to properly uh, do the work. Uh, it, it's a match, you see. Well, the Bible's the same way. The Bible is a spiritual nourishment, and sometimes what you need is something to supplement you, just to just to carry you along, keep you spiritually alert. And then there are the times when you got some heavy lifting to do spiritually, and you need a steady, significant diet of the meat of the Word of God to prepare you for what you're going to do. And that's your spiritual nourishment. And when you neglect the Bible, you neglect your spiritual nourishment it affects your spiritual nourishment you're going to be weak and you're going to be sickly and you're going to be undernourished for the work that God's given you to do that was Matthew 4 4 let me tell you another thing you you need uh, the Bible you just have to have it and if you neglect the Bible it is going to affect your spiritual growth Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, and look at verse 2. God intends for you to grow. You have to grow as a Christian. He doesn't intend for you to be a baby or a babe all of your life. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, he says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Now, you may, you may be thinking, you know, I've been saved a long time. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that you've grown. The Corinthian church uh, didn't grow, okay? And when Paul had to deal with them, he had to deal with them as babes. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither... Yet now are you able, for you're yet carnal. There are a lot of carnal Christians that haven't grown up. And, you know, God uh, desires your growth. You you need to grow. Uh, it's, uh, It's abnormal for a baby that's born not to grow. There's something sickly wrong with that baby. Likewise, with a Christian who's not growing, something's wrong. And the problem is he's carnal. He's not spiritual. And God desires to form himself in you. Uh, You're predestined by the Spirit of God to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. He's trying to form himself in you. And and that, that formation takes place by spiritual growth. And spiritual growth does not happen without the Word of God. Now, I realize that not only is there the reading of the Word of God to accomplish this spiritual growth, but there is also the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. In other words... When you neglect the Bible at home, it affects your spiritual growth. And when you neglect to attend to the preaching and teaching of the Word of God, it's going to affect your spiritual growth. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, you're going to find that Jesus Christ gave gifts to the church. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, tells you that the gifts he gave to the church are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I'm a pastor and teacher. And I've been given to the church by the Lord. I don't say that boastfully. I mean, just that's how it happened. I didn't come up with this idea on my own, in other words. 
Lord, the Lord designed it that way. And I have a function. In verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You're not to be a child anymore. In verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So you see, your spiritual growth is directly proportioned to the amount of Bible you are getting both through reading and through the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Listen, there are a lot of men that are preaching today and teaching, but they're not giving a very, st a very sturdy diet or a very nutritional diet of food from the pulpit. There's a, there's a lot of entertainment going on. There's a little bit of counseling going on from behind the pulpit. Not very much preaching and teaching of the Word of God. And you know what you have? Spiritually undernourished children. And it all comes from a neglect of the Bible. Neglecting the Bible affects your spiritual walk. You don't know where you're going. You can't walk by faith when you don't read the Bible. Neglecting the Bible affects your spiritual light. You can't make appropriate decisions in, in the will of God because you have no spiritual light from the Lord. The spiritual light doesn't shine to, to illuminate what sin in your life and what needs to change or where you're going when you're going in the wrong direction. Neglecting the Bible affects your spiritual cleansing, and you get defiled by the things in the world, and, and, and your body is literally spiritually uh, beat up, and you have no way to get clean in, unless you have the Word of God. And then neglecting the Bible affects your spiritual nourishment, because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And neglecting the Bible affects your spiritual growth. You just can't grow up. Listen, I've met people who have been saved or testified that they've been saved for 20 years, and I had no reason based on their testimony to disagree with that. And yet they were as, as spiritually immature as somebody who had been saved for five, six months. Now, listen, I'm not boasting about our church when I tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I am magnifying the Word of God. He said, in, in the Psalms, he said, magnify thy word above all thy name. I'm magnifying the word of God. We've had people that have come here that have been saved for decades, two decades, and been in a church where they weren't really being fed and they didn't spend any time reading the Bible much. And they came here and they'll say, after being here for a few months, let's say two or three months, they'll say, I have learned more Bible in two or three months of coming here to church than I have in the previous 20 years of going where I was going. We know why? Because, because we recognize the importance of the Bible in your life, so we preach it and teach it and encourage you to read it. Again, now, we're not saying that boastfully. We're magnifying the Word, not our church. And, and the reason that we need to magnify the Word is we'll probably never see you in our church. It's not that we don't want to. We'd love to, but we, we probably won't because... You, you go somewhere else or you live in another city. But may I tell you something? You are not going to grow. You are not going to be nourished. You are not going to be cleansed from those defiling influences, and so you're going to keep dealing with the same sins. You're not going to have light from God on your life and on your decisions, and you are not going to be able to walk by faith until you get in your Bible. Now, I don't say just any ordinary Bible. There are a lot of, you'll go to the bookstore because you hadn't been reading your Bible, and you're going to want a Bible that you can read, and you're going to want one easy to understand, and you're going to go to the clerk there at the bookstore, and you're going to say, I need one of those easier to understand Bibles. And the only reason you're going to say that is that you've been led to believe by other people who use that phrase, easier to understand. You're going to believe that a modern Bible with the, with the, you know, the newspaper-type language in it is going to be the one that's going to help you to grow. And I'm going to tell you something. I have friends of mine that use those Bibles, and they really believe they're the Word of God, and, and they, do, they do help them. Uh, but may I tell you something? <laughs> that's because there's still some semblance of the words of God in those books. Would you not like to just grow to be the very best you can and be the person God wants you to be and have 
really good light and, and a good strong walk in the Lord. May I tell you something? Dispense with all that and go get you a good King James Bible. You say, well, that, 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 it's these and thous and these. I understand. I understand. This message is not about the inspiration of the Bible, but the Bible tells us all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, correction, reproof, instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Do you hear that? He said all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know what inspiration is? Inspiration is, is when the Holy Spirit gives you the Word of God as you're reading it. In other words, Job 32, 8 says, There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. Inspiration, then, is a work of the Spirit of God when you're reading the Scripture whereby God then teaches you what you're reading and gives you what you need. Listen to me. I don't want to argue about it with you. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be narrow-minded about it. I'm trying to help you. Go get you a King James Bible. Get on your knees before God and say, God, I, I cannot walk by faith without the Scripture. I don't have spiritual light without the Scripture. I can't get clean without the Scripture. I can't be spiritually nourished without the words of God. I cannot grow without the Bible. And on faith, Father, I'm, I'm taking this old King James Bible and trusting your spirit to nourish me and give me light and faith and cleansing and growth. Please show me in the Scripture what you want me to know today as I read it. And I, I tell you, I've seen it, I've seen it a thousand times. God will give you what you need from the Scripture because it is profitable when it's given to you by inspiration. And the Spirit of God will answer that prayer, and He'll teach you that Bible. I'll tell you what, you'll grow. You'll see it. 